per unit of helium, the people who pay the most seem to be the people planning parties. So that uh, in an auction between different people who want helium, it's not clear that the, the, um, the people who get the helium would be those who want to use it for medical diagnosis or making cheap, clean power. No, it's the people planning a birthday party who might be getting the helium. So I don't want to overstate that because the slice for parties is very, very small. But they have a high willingness to pay. Helium really gets going in the, in the early 20th century and, and many people think in terms of the physicists using helium who liquefied it and, uh, and discovered things like superconductivity. But actually equally interesting things were going on in the United States. People were looking for natural gas and they were finding that it wasn't uh, uh, coming out of the ground in the ways they'd, they'd hoped, it, it, it appeared to be contaminated. And, and, and chemical engineers uh, in the US, uh, in Kansas, uh, looked at this gas, which had, was mysteriously contaminated, uh, and discovered the presence of helium. Uh, helium named after the sun, previously seen in spectroscopy of the sun. And here it was in, in natural gas coming out of the ground in the States. And, and that actually led US leadership in helium that persisted through the 20th century. Helium is, is a product and it, it, its uh, market is shaped by both demand and, and supply. On the demand side, uh, helium has a long history of being a high technology gas. Um, the technologies it's been uh, uh, applied to have changed over the years. So in the early 20th century, one thinks of airships. And then in the middle of the 20th century, uh, purging the tanks of missiles and rockets. Then through to electronics and, and uh, exotic superconductivity applications. Um, yeah, so it's always been a high technology material uh, supporting the future. Um, the supply is that it's a byproduct of, uh, of natural gas, uh, of our unsustainable fossil fuel economy. So there's a tension there between this sort of ever evolving high technology demand and this rather sort of uh, unsustainable traditional source, fossil fuels. Helium has a future. Um, every now and again, one, helium crises appear in the media and statements to the effect that the world is running out of helium. That's not the case. Uh, there's enormous amounts of helium uh, underground, uh, mixed with, with natural gas and geological reserves. Um, so these crises are, are not the fundamental issue. Uh, there is, however, a long-term problem. Uh, and that is that the uh, natural gas industry has a finite future. And uh, therefore, the helium supply chain has a finite future. Furthermore, um, it, there's this interesting aspect of the fact that helium is a byproduct. Because any helium that we uh, choose not to use today is not conserved underground for the future. It has been extracted with natural gas, taken and combusted in, in somebody's stove or industrial facility, and, and therefore has just been on its journey from the ground to the atmosphere. So, um, yes, helium is on a journey from, the, from underground to the atmosphere, uh, and uh, that raises uh, prospects of a problem in the long term, a real problem. Shale gas is, is um, characterized by the fact it comes from uh, a highly impermeable rock, so, so impermeable that the, the methane of the natural gas could not escape. And it seems that the much smaller helium atom is indeed able to get through the shale of, of, of shale rocks uh, associated with shale gas. That means that, it, to our impression, the, pre the presence of helium in, in shale gas is very limited. Okay? So the direct implication of the uh, transformative move towards shale gas uh, for helium is, is very limited because there's so little helium in shale gas. However, the secondary or indirect relationships could be profound. Uh, the shale gas transformation in the United States is uh, pushing the United States from a predicted future of importing liquefied natural gas from around the world to potentially exporting it. And uh, liquefied natural gas is a major trend in the whole global natural gas market, and anything that's a major trend in the natural gas market is going to be important for helium. Well, looking ahead, um, some of the new users in the frame would be in the energy area, uh, both in uh, conventional nuclear energy, fission, uh, where it gives the opportunity to use uh, uh, a higher temperature fluid to turn the turbines. It's more in, uh, efficient in engineering terms to get away from steam and get towards helium. That would be a major user if that, that happens in fission. Another one on the horizon is nuclear fusion, uh, bringing small atoms together to make energy, not big atoms of uranium or plutonium and splitting them. Um, so that, that form of nuclear energy needs big, big magnets cooled with uh, liquid helium. And so that, that would be a major user in the future if that takes off. 
Price is a, is a, a, a consequence, of course, of both supply and demand, and, a, and, and more a consequence of supply chain constraints than, than it is of atoms uh, you know, in reserves under, under the ground. Um, so two things to say about, about the price of helium. One, it, one is um, helium is in, a, in an unusual market. It, it, it's um, historically had a major interventionist role by the US federal government. Yeah, so the, and, and the US federal government has a program uh, by which it seeks to sell off most of its strategic reserve of helium by 2015. So that process is, is expected to tail off quite soon. So there's a sort of market complexity of public and private uh, players in the market. Uh, and that has shaped the price. Um, there are six big companies involved in helium, which is enough for competition. Uh, but in some territories around the world, the, the number operating is, is fewer than that, being sort of more isolated territories. Uh, so there is, I think, some issue of competitiveness in the helium market. Um, yes, and then the final thing to say is that the nature of helium is it's used by many diverse types of customers. I've stressed the high-tech users. But of course, party balloons use helium. Yeah? And the ironic thing is that, that per unit of helium, the people who pay the most seem to be the people planning parties. So that uh, in an auction between different people who want helium, it's not clear that the, the, um, the people who get the helium would be those who want to use it for medical diagnosis or making cheap, clean power. No, it's the people planning a birthday party who might be getting the helium. So I don't want to overstate that because the slice for parties is very, very small but they have a high willingness to pay. So helium is complicated in the market. Helium is quite a big business. Roughly, it's about a billion dollars a year. But as I said earlier, it sits on the back of a natural gas industry. That's about a trillion dollars a year. So a lot of strategic decisions in natural gas are made without any concern at all for helium. And that's a problem, because that's what drives the, primarily drives that problematic journey of helium from the ground to the atmosphere. Uh, the fact that decisions are made in the natural gas space without thinking about helium. And that's really, I suggest, where the waste fundamentally is. What we should do is, as we take the natural gas out of the ground, is remember the helium that's with it. We call this venting, when, when helium is taken uh, from the ground to the atmosphere without any concern for using it. Uh, historically, that's just been the, the gas came out of the ground and went through pipes to the end use where it was burnt and went to the atmosphere. But this shift to liquefied natural gas in some ways is, 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 causes more concern because the process of liquefaction of natural gas uh, is part of the process of extracting helium. So if you're doing that, it, it favours helium extraction. It, uh, it makes it economically viable when it otherwise wouldn't be. Um, but the, uh, the situation is many LNG uh, facilities don't separate the helium. So they have a so-called purge gas that's roughly half helium, and they just vent it to the atmosphere. That's a shame.